Good morning, it's Read Aloud Saturday, and it is the last Saturday before a holiday called Christmas that many of us celebrate. And even if you don't celebrate Christmas, maybe you celebrate Hanukkah, or maybe you don't celebrate holidays, it's okay, that's fine. It's just a great time of year to celebrate, um, to be happy, to take a break from school, and to be with those that you love. So from me and my family, we wish you the happiest of holidays, the wonderful, a wonderful, wonderful break and um, time spent with really this year, probably those in your home. <laughs> but maybe if you get to sneak out to see grandma or grandpa or cousins or aunts or uncles, um, that is a wonderful thing too. So I just wish that you are all safe and healthy and happy. Um, during this time of happiness and love. Now, a couple weeks ago, I had uh, a little boy named Miles from Minnesota, who is part of my family, contact me and tell me that he loved my read-alouds and that he, um, and so I asked him if he had a Christmas story that he would really want me to read. And he said, yes, the night before Christmas. So in my family, we have a huge box of Christmas books that we get out every year at Christmas. I put them away and then we get them out at Christmas and then it's like they're brand new because we haven't seen them for a year. Um, and in our set of books, we have a few versions of The Night Before Christmas, but the one I love the most is Jan Brett's version of The Night Before Christmas. And what I love about Jan Brett, I'm sure maybe you've read Jan Brett before, what I love about Jan Brett is that she does these borders around her pictures and there's all this cool stuff in the borders. So today while I'm reading, I will try to push the book as far forward as I can so that you can see the borders uh, um, in the book and see what's in the borders. And maybe I'll talk a little bit about what you might see in the borders. But The Night Before Christmas is a traditional tale. Um, and... It's one that you've probably heard before. Um, it's originally based off a poem by a gentleman named Clement Moore. And um, it is the tale of Santa Claus coming. So here we go. The Night Before Christmas, Jan Brett's version. And here, even on the title page, you'll see the borders. See the border? There's an elf there with Santa's list and some polar bear. This is pretty cool, isn't it? That's the North Pole. And last week we talked about dedications. This one is dedicated to Gregory, Sophie, and Lee to Saris. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. So I'll just show half pages so that you can see better. And there's a little bit of a glare in my office this morning. So look at that in the borders there. Pretty cool, huh? And here's the other half. And there's the house. Oh, and I just missed one little detail in this picture here. Do you see it? It's coming. Very exciting. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And mom in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. So here's the picture of the kiddos sleeping and what are they dreaming of? Candy and cookies. Visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. There's the border. And if we flip it, this girl has a giant cat pillow in her bed. And did you notice that the boy was sleeping with his dog? What else do you notice about this book? 
Do the words do something? Let's listen to this one and see if you can figure it out. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. I think what I notice about the words is, oh, look, there's a little pug, is that the words rhyme in this book. And if you don't know what rhyming is yet, you should ask mom and dad and they can help you and they can show you other books that have rhyming words. Here's the reindeer. <laughs> More rapid than eagles, his courses they came and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the courses they flew with a sleigh full of toys. And St. Nicholas too. And I'll kind of show you the big picture here because this is a cool one with Santa and the sleigh on the roof. And then here's the border. There's the cat out in the snow, crazy cats. And also the pug. And there's some cute little ornaments on their tree. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. And Jan Brett sets her, um, her night before Christmas in Victorian times. So the homes have very intricate um, turrets and windows and, and porches, which is kind of fun. This is the neighbor's house. And here is the narrator of the story, which is the dad. legs are those coming down the chimney. Look at that. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his toe. Oh, sorry. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. There he is. There's the big guy. Santa Claus. And here's the big picture. I know there's a little bit of a glare. Sorry. It's very bright out this morning and it's snowing. So um, there's a little bit of a glare in my office. <clears throat> His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. And here are the cookies that they set out for Santa. As I back away, you'll see the reindeer again. And over here, there he is, there's Santa eating a cookie. Very, very cool illustrations. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. 
He was chubby and plump. All right, jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. And I think what's funny in the pictures here is that there's a lot going on outside while Santa's in the house, right? These owls and these reindeer are getting into a little bit of mischief. <clears throat> he spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And here we can see what's going on outside while he's in there filling the stockings. And look, who is looking out the window at what's going on outside? It's Santa. And laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. Oh, the elf says, the big guy's coming back. We better hurry up and get this show on the road, huh? There's the stockings all full from Santa's visit. He sprang to his sleigh and, and to his team gave a whistle. Wow, look at this picture. It's so beautiful. Of Santa and his sleigh. And away they all flew like the down on a thistle. But I heard him explain as he drove out of sight. And look who's up watching now, the kiddos too. And I bet you might know the last line of this book. And if you do, because you've heard it before, you can read it with me, are you ready? Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. So that is the end of Jan Brett's The Night Before Christmas. Now remember, Jan Brett did not write those words. Clement Moore wrote those words, and we have passed them down from generation to generation to generation, and many authors have done their own version of The Night Before Christmas. Jan Brett rewrote Clement's words and put these awesome illustrations with the fancy borders around it. And remember that Jan Brett's books, all of her books have the border. Um, so if you wanna to go to the library um, and check out some Jan Brett books, you'll be able to explore her borders more. I hope that you all have a wonderful break. I will not be doing Read Aloud Saturday, Saturday again until January. Um, and then we will explore more books together. You can join my YouTube channel. You can follow my YouTube channel if you just look for Priscilla Dwyer. And then you can listen to all the Read Aloud Saturday days that I've done so far. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy, Happy New Year from Target Tutoring Literacy. Bye.